Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Well, as you can see, I am now streaming, hopefully, on a much uh, superior uh, use of the internet. Um, yesterday, got a new uh, router, which at first uh, we couldn't get it to work at all. It seemed we were getting better reception outside than what we were getting inside the house. Because of the construction of the house, it absorbs a lot of the signal. It seems the G4 signal is a lot weaker than the old fashioned signal uh, that was going. So it's easily blocked. However, uh, I'm actually further away from the house than what I ever was on the old uh, system. And uh, I'm actually getting good reception at the moment. As you can see, the chickens are running about. Little Sandy, where are you Sandy? He's down there uh, running around my feet. There you go. The device is telling me to rotate. Uh, Jane's putting the washing out for the last time before she gets ready to go to the airport. And uh, she flies out today to the UK, uh, basically to go and see her mum and spend some time with her family uh, and that. And uh, basically, I'm here on my own with Mr. Boots, still there in that chair, uh, the chickens and the sunshine. Don't forget the sunshine. All right. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, right. I think the quality of this is looking really really good so if anybody who's watching online at the moment just wants to comment on the quality i don't know what sort of feed you're getting but i'm feeling very positive at the moment anyway let's have a look at the news for today the 27th of october 2020 um <clears throat> just to say uh the covid figures at the moment they are dropping i've got to say that however we are getting more uh increases in the north of the country uh, 719 new cases on Monday, um, 95 people in the ICUs at the moment around the country. Uh, those figures are up. It was about 86 uh, the other day. Um, we've also had, unfortunately, seven new deaths, which now brings us to a total of 581 deaths in the country. Um, looking at the new cases, 260 of the cases were in the Attica area and 84 of them were in the Thessaloniki area, but also uh, Northern Greece has seen a little bit of an increase as well. Areas like Ceres and areas like that uh, have seen an increase as well. So at the moment, um, no word as well as to the uh, person who was um, tested positive over the weekend, uh, what the outcome with them, whether they're in the hospital or whether they've been released or at home, uh, nobody knows at the moment and the local media are not saying anything either. Um, right, news then. Bit of local news, literally local news. Uh, two men accused of uh, receiving stolen gold uh, taken from the church of Iron Mavra. Now, Iron Mavra is our local church just up the road there. Now, they were burgled back in 2015, and it seems that these uh, two men received gold that was stolen uh, from the church and uh, basically uh, return the gold to the actual um, church itself. Anyway, um, because a complaint had not been filed by the church, the police as a formality had to arrest the men on uh, receiving stolen property. Uh, the men were then taken to court and obviously subsequently acquitted on the formality that the uh, uh, um, church were happy to receive their goods back and also for the fact that it couldn't be proven that the men had received the um, stuff in some kind of illegal transaction. So those two men then were acquitted of um, uh, of receiving stolen goods from a robbery. So again, I am Mavra Church. For those people who are curious about I am Mavra, I am Mavra is the second, uh, prob well, I would say, yeah, probably the second most holy place here on the island. Uh, we have like a mini St. Dennis's week here. Uh, uh, normally, there's like a little mini market set up going up the hill. Uh, the church itself is famous um, because they reckon, uh, a lot of theologists reckon, uh, Greek theologists reckon, that Mary Magdalene visited the church uh, at one point in her life. And the rumour had it that maybe 
she visited uh, the church with Jesus. And that's the, one of the reasons why a lot of people come from all over the country uh, for its week. Uh, like St. Dennis has his week, the Iron Mabra has her week. Um, it also had a fire back in uh, 2005, uh, which destroyed the church again controversial bit of fire nobody really sure how it occurred and at the moment it's being restored and um, next door to where the church is there's a gentleman there a carpenter who is restoring the church and he's done a fantastic job the, the church had a beautiful ceiling all covered in gold and this is where the gold came from uh, that was stolen uh, because they're putting gold leaf back into the ceiling etc etc and uh, basically gold was was removed from one of the icons of uh, of the i mabra but uh, i'll probably do a special episode on that just to let you see what the church is like and give you a little location to come to next time you're here on the island anyway uh, another story for you as well it seems that 8.8 uh, .8 million euros has been approved for the improvement of uh, Porta Veromi also Porta Roma and below beach uh, to give more access to people uh, on on the beaches and special equipment access equipment as well um, for people to be able to take uh, have more of an interaction on the beach so this is specifically for people who are disabled uh, the money's coming from get this as a title the money's coming from the operational program competitive entrepreneurialship and innovation and the money has been uh, approved and the economic committee at the moment is now in the last part of uh, doing the studies and releasing uh, the, uh, the the tenders for bids uh, to do the work that's required in the various locations around uh, the uh, beaches of Zakynthos. Um, another story coming to mind. It's all positive news today, actually. I've got to be honest. Uh, more news today. Uh, a student dormitory on Zakynthos. Yep. Yeah. Um, for those people who don't know, we have what is called the tie. Now, the Thai is affiliated to the Ionian University and basically students come here <clears throat> to learn about things like uh, green issues and also tourism, etc. And the Thai has only been running for about the past, I think it's been running for about five or six years now. Brand new building, lovely, lovely uh, uh, place. Uh, and it's getting a good reputation and it's now uh, seconded to the Ionian University. Uh, one of the problems is a lot of students from Greece come here to obviously learn and do courses and they don't have anywhere to stay. So basically yesterday uh, the director of the university, um, I haven't got his surname now, <laughs> I've got Andreas down, I forgot to write down his surname. Oh silly me. Anyway, he was here yesterday uh, doing a meeting talking about the plans to build a dormitory for students coming to make life easier for them when they come to do their studies. He was also talking about the focus of the university as well. And funding, he says, is achievable. Funding is probably there. Uh, however, the focus is on the university and the students. And also remember that the university has also locations in Catalonia, Ithaca and Corfu as well, which is where the main university is uh, located. So he says the money is there. However, they are exploring uh, ways of obviously uh, and also exploring buying land as well here on the island where they would like to build uh, this dormitory, which, again, I think is an absolute positive. Right. OK. 28th of October in Greece is a very, very important day. It's known as Ohi Day or No Day. And basically it celebrates uh, the fallen heroes of Greece. And it's like Greece's Remembrance Day. Uh, they don't really have the same Remembrance Day as we do in the UK with red poppies and stuff like that. But Ahi Day for them is a day when they celebrate their uh, stand against Hitler and Mussolini by refusing to fight on the Axis side. And this heralded um, basically the invasion by a, first the Italian troops uh, who then had a right bloody nose from the Greeks. And then obviously the Germans then came in to finish the job. In fact, basically, uh, Ohi Day, uh, sorry, the, the invasion of Greece 
uh, basically slowed down the invasion of the Soviet Union. And even Stalin said that the Greeks actually bought them time because they had a feeling that something was up. And uh, basically, Hitler was a bit annoyed at Mussolini that he went into Greece uh, against his better judgment. And uh, Germans had to come and help them out, basically. And uh, this then delayed his plans for the invasions of, um, of Russia uh, because they were busy fighting in Greece. Um, also, it was when um, Churchill also said that the Greeks fought like lions. Uh, again, and it was the first real land victory of the Second World War as well. So the Greeks take a great pride in Ohi Day. So uh, normally we'd be having parades uh, through the middle of the town uh, with the military and also with, uh, with the school kids and the Boy Scouts and everybody else. Um, however, that's not going to happen this year. However, the laying of the wreaths to the fallen will still go ahead at 11 o'clock tomorrow, tomorrow at the, um, uh, uh, I'm saying like the cenotaph, the um, memorial to the heroes of the fallen. And if you're wondering where that is actually in Zakynthos, um, it's down on the seafront. And it's where the St. Nicholas's Church is, across the road from there, on the entrance into the port, you will see a statue with a couple of little cannons beside it. That is the statue to the fallen. Um, and their uh, school children uh, will lay wreaths along with the um, mayor and dignitaries from the municipality. And the regional director will lay wreaths as well uh, to the fallen. And uh, also the Zakynthos Philharmonic will also be playing music as well around there. And that's really the big, big thing that people can go to. There is also a church service at the Metropolitan, Theater, uh, Metropolitan Cathedral. However, uh, that is uh, limited numbers and I've got a feeling it'll probably be by special invite anyway. So um, if you do want to go and have a look at the wreath laying, it's 11 o'clock down by the Statue to the Fallen. Right, let's have a quick look and see who's online. I can see a lot of people complaining about weather at the moment. Uh, Sean Gibbons, nice to have you tuning in. Al Parks and Catrick tuning in as well. Uh, Cliff Smith tuning in. Cheryl McGee is watching. Hello, Cheryl. Cheryl is saying, good morning, Colin. Uh, say hi to Jane for me. Hello. Okay. Cheryl says hi. Okay. Uh, Cheryl also says uh, safe flight to Jane as well. Uh, Stephen Hodgson is watching as well from County Durham. How you doing, fella? Cheryl McGee says quality seems pretty good. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm pleased about that. It does feel better because when I'm looking at the image on the on the actual screen, it seems more uh, together than what it has been in the past. Yvonne Hughes is watching. Uh, also, Cliff Smith is watching as well. Um, good morning, Jins from Lugs and the concert crew up at Durham. Yeah, they're firefighters, or uh, Stephen is a firefighter. I'm not sure if he's back on duty or whatever, or whether he's retired, one of the two. Anyway, always on duty, fireman. Uh, Andy Little is watching, Raffridge buddy. Andy Owens watching as well. Andrew the Fridge Watkins is watching down there in Wales. Uh, did you manage to get yourself? What was the other story? Oh, there's been some crazy stuff about Wales at the moment and what is essential and what not is essential. Bless you, fellow. Hope you getting through it. But he did say yesterday he had plenty of wine, all right? So that's an essential item. Um... Andy, Andy Owens is watching Morning Ginge. Shelly Rogers is watching Ginge. Uh, Alan Parks is... <laughs> and he says, Ginge, the accent is getting worse. I think that's from Andrew the Fridge Watkins. Yeah, it is. I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in the Welsh zone at the moment. Uh, anyway, uh, Al Parks says, Morning, guys. Safe flight, Jane. Enjoy the cold in Catherine. Uh, I'm still in my PJs. Look after the place while Jane is away. A uh, bull night before she returns. Bloody right and all. I've got to make sure the place is clean and tidy before she comes. I get a bit paranoid with it. However, I'm not paranoid when I come home. Uh <laughs> Uh, running round with a white glove on tops of the cupboards. All right. <laughs> You'd think she was ex-military, wouldn't you? But she's not. Uh, Paul McGann is watching. Uh, Jerry Coyle is watching. Andrew the Fridge Watkins <laughs> again is watching. Melanie Thompson. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll leave it there. 
Right. Oh, yeah. Can I just say hello to Wiggy Win Stanley over there in uh, sunny Cyprus? I was chatting to him this morning just before doing this broadcast. Uh, you need some Welsh accent lessons from Yi Jinj, right, Hillary? We shall tune up for Welsh accent lessons. I thought my Welsh accent was quite good at times. I think it's how I feel. OK, uh, Jane Butterworth is saying morning, sweetheart. I've had no to and fro from Jane this morning, <laughs> which I quite enjoy. Um, I did have something to say. Yes. Something's just jumped in my head. As you see, I am wearing a Brazil top. But it's nothing to do with Brazil. It's to do with Argentina. Argentina, it seems, has a special booking out procedure. And uh, basically what happens, um, if you're booking out uh, to go out somewhere in Argentina, we had the same sort of thing here in Greece, uh, where you had to uh, send a text message with a number, your name and address. And then when you got a reply from the police, you were allowed to go out and do whatever it was. And you had two hours to go out and do it. Well, it seems. Oh, yeah. And if you were caught without this uh, authorization, it was a uh, 150 euro fine, which then went to 300 over Easter. However, I've got to be honest, the Argentinians have, have gone one step better and also one step ridiculous, if you see what I mean, um, in the fact that if you're caught out without the authorization, um you don't get fined you get put on community service so what's the point so you get caught going out of your house you haven't booked out you get stopped by the police and they say right we're booking you but we're not going to find you we're going to stick you on community service and the rumor is old people are going out wanting to get caught to do community service so they've got some company <laughs> how daft is that but anyway i just love it i'm going to miss jane uh going through the um all the little stories to do with covid she seems to find lots of interesting stuff as well anyway uh what's this how uh pissing in houndslow all right then fella right then jane um oh yeah here's a point jane butterworth is upset that they've cancelled the six nations <laughs> Belen, she says, yeah, the rugby's been cancelled. I didn't realise the rugby had been cancelled. Thank you for that, Jane. I appreciate that. Listen, I better stop gibbering. I've got to get on. I've got to get Jane to the airport. Uh, and I've also got to sort stuff out. Oh, yes, quickly. Tomorrow, uh, it being Wednesday, the 28th, I'm going to do a special Ochi Day broadcast. And I'm going to do that live actually uh from the house my uh, music show i'm gonna sort of do a little bit like my ve show that i did uh, months ago when we were celebrating ve uh, ve day uh i'm gonna be doing that tomorrow uh so all you ex raf rage gunners if you can tune in tune in live drop me your requests etc your dedications so i'm going to be broadcasting that from the house here live I might just do a broadcast from in town tomorrow from 34 uh, of uh, I'll probably go down 11 o'clock, uh, see the uh, fallen uh, reef lane and then give you a quick report after that as well. All right. Anyway, I'll let you guys get on. You have a great day, whatever you're doing, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you later. And uh, also, I shall rush to the airport now and take uh, Jane there to get home and see her mum. Anyway, catch you later. Be good. ta -ra.